In this video, I want to continue our discussion about maximum likelihood estimators in the circumstance of when we're dealing with a Bernoulli random variable. So the example I gave of a Bernoulli random variable earlier, even though I possibly didn't state that it was a Bernoulli random variable, was that we were dealing with the UK population. And the idea here is that within the UK population, there are a certain percentage of individuals who are male and there are a certain percentage who are, let's say, female. And the idea within the population is that there is some true P which represents the probability that an individual is male, for example. And what we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to, from a sample, come up with an estimator for this population parameter P. And we employed maximum likelihood techniques here. Uh, explicitly, what we were actually doing is we were using um, Bernoulli random variables as to model the sort of probability of taking an individual from the population and the probability that they would be male. And we found that the maximum likelihood estimator for the probability P was just given by the sample mean, where we're defining this to be the sample mean over our sum of xi, where xi here represents the sex of an individual, and arbitrarily I've chosen xi to be 1 if they're male and 0 if they are female. And also in that particular video, we also, as a sort of part to deriving this maximum likelihood estimator for the probability p, we actually worked out the derivative of the log likelihood with respect to p, and it was equal to n x bar divided by p minus n times 1 minus x bar divided by 1 minus p. Okay, so this is what we got to at the last video, and that was great. We, we came up with an estimator for the population parameter p, but what we didn't say is we didn't actually allow ourselves to do any sort of inference on this. And the reason for that is because we didn't actually derive any sort of standard error in this particular circumstance. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, the idea here is that because we're dealing with a model which just has one particular parameter, P, then in this circumstance, the information matrix as a function of P is just going to be a scalar. So I'm just going to write it as I of P. And it's just going to have one component, which is going to be minus the expectation of D2L over DP squared. And actually what we can do is we can actually estimate the information matrix just by substituting in P equals P hat here. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, easy enough. We've got our first derivative. All we need to do now is differentiate it again. Okay, so if I differentiate this expression again with respect to P, I'm going to get D2L over DP squared. And it's going to be equal to minus NX bar over P squared. And then we're going to get another minus when I differentiate this thing on the bottom here, as well as the minus here, and as well as the fact it's to the power minus 1. So two of those minuses are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with 1 minus still left over, which is going to be minus n times 1 minus x bar, all divided through by 1 minus p all squared. And in order to simplify this, I need to combine both of these two fractions. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take out a factor of minus n, and then I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply this term by 1 minus p all squared, and this top by p squared all squared. So combining these fractions, we have that this is equal to minus n times open brackets. We're going to have n, or sorry, we've taken out n, so we're just going to have x bar times 1 minus p all squared minus 1 minus x bar times p squared all divided through by p squared times 1 minus p all squared. Okay, so then we can simplify this a little bit further. If we expand out the bracket, um, which I leave as a sort of activity for you guys to do if you want to follow up on it, I'm not going to go through it in full here, we get that this is equal to minus n times x bar minus 2x bar times p plus p squared, all divided through by p squared times 1 minus p all squared. Okay, so at the moment as we left this, this doesn't look particularly illuminating. But then what we can do is we can realise that what we're actually trying to do is estimate 
the information matrix because we don't actually have this population parameter P. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to substitute in P hat for P. And we know that P hat is just equal to X bar. So if we just replace all the X bars with P hat and all the P's with P hat, then what we're left with is minus M times, we're going to have open brackets, P hat minus 2 P hat all squared plus P hat squared all divided through by P hat squared times 1 minus P hat all squared. And in the next video, we're going to continue our derivation of this and we're actually going to derive the Kramer route lower bound. In